Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in to Call the Cops. My name is Officer Jamie Keneally. Um, hard to believe, but less than three weeks ago, Penn State football coach Joe Paterno was fired, and many would say for good reason, in case you didn't know, as most of you do know. Paterno was fired for contributing to the cover-up that allowed one of his coaches, who you could see there, Coach Jerry Sandusky, uh, to sexually abuse young boys. At last check, uh, former Penn State assistant Jerry Sandusky is facing at least 10 charges of sexual abuse. Uh, anyone who's followed this story uh, knows so much should have and could have been done. Tonight, though, we talk about sexual abuse. We've got George Giuliano, Lieutenant Giuliano in studio, uh, Lenora Joseph from the District Attorney's Office, and tonight we answer a couple of questions, what to do when you see it and how to report it. So a lot to get to in just a bit. Now, if you saw last week's show, you know we had Police Officer Bobby Anthony in studio. Uh, of course, Bobby is the department's chronologist. And I want to thank Bobby for coming in to talk about the recent dedication to Police Officer Andrew Cuneo, who, if you, as m most of you know, was the first Italian-born police officer in the uh, Boston Police Department. Tragically, the first Italian-born police officer killed. And this dedication, this plaque, as you see here, was dedicated to him uh, a couple months back, Bobby Anthony was in studio to talk about it, and I got to say, everybody involved did a really nice job with this one. You know, we wear the same cloth that he does. Uh, we walk in the same boots that he did. Uh, we walk the same beat that he did. Um, you know, they recognize our first, whether it's the first Latino, or whether it's the first Irish officer, but uh, these officers were killed in the line of duty. We have to remember our officers that gave, that sacrificed their lives in order to um, fulfill our end, of the bargain, our end of the bargain, our end of the bargain is we have to remember them so that future generations will remember our history I mean, the nation's oldest police department and we have to make sure that everybody remembers what they gave in order to get us to where we are today. Well stated, Bobby. In the meantime, congratulations and welcome aboard to the department's newest class of police officers. Uh, congratulations, of course, to class 5011. 50, yeah, I'm pretty sure about 5011. Uh, they graduated last week, and the video you see here was taken the day before they graduated. And as is tradition now, the class uh, ran from the academy, police academy in Hyde Park, all the way to Boston Police Department headquarters. Uh, and um, once they got there, they laid a wreath at the BPD Memorial, uh, of course, to honor uh, all those who have come before them. But again, congratulations and welcome aboard to class 5011. All right, gotta, uh, gotta tell you about the, the uh, Turkey Bowl. Green team taking on white team over the Thanksgiving Day holiday. Take a look at your game winning touchdown, everybody. Bobby Griffin, police officer Bobby Griffin dropping back and he's gonna chuck it deep to the corner to a wide open Craig Galvin, green team. I don't know if it was an upset, but they got the win. They were excited. 28-21 the final. We cut up to the quarterback and the receiver to talk about the game winning they score. They were man defense. And we had a sweet play called, but we noticed, well, Craig noticed, um, that Billy was covering him one-on-one. -on -one, so he gave me a little thing, so, you know, I-O. So I gave Craig a wink. I knew that meant he was going to do a quick out on the left side to the corner of the end zone. Uh, we knew that they had Billy Traft out there, and he was definitely a weak, a weak link out there. And we knew that we could expose that um, if we ever had the opportunity. And, and uh, it was the last play of the game. The game, the game was tied. And I, I mean, I, I saw Billy cover me, and I said to Bobby, I gave Bobby the signal. He knew what the signal meant. I knew what it meant. I was going to the corner one-on-one -on, -one on Billy, and uh, <clears throat> all day, every day on that one, I knew that was going to happen. 28-21, the final in the Turkey Bowl, sixth annual Turkey Bowl. All right, speaking of great events, you got to love this next story. Each and every Thanksgiving, uh, the officers from District E5 out in the West Roxbury, Rosendale area stopped by Roach Brothers in West Roxbury. It's the annual turkey giveaway. Uh, they've been doing it for a, a number of years. And uh, kudos to police officers Elvis Garcia. Uh, I think we got Brian Sullivan? Eddie Roach. Eddie Roach is in the house. These guys doing some great work. Again, they're er they got there early, loaded up the truck, and they dropped off turkey dinners. And, and I'm telling you, all the fixings too, folks. I mean, the real deal, turkey dinner. And uh, it's nice to see our guys involved dropping off the dinners. And we cut up to Elvis to talk about it afterwards. 
Yeah, uh, today is all about giving, uh, the gift of giving. Uh, we're out here delivering turkeys to families in need, and uh, we're hoping to uh, bestow some blessings upon to them. Do. And it just gives uh, a great opportunity for the West Roxbury Business and Professional Association to team up with our Boston Police E5 here and Ethos and the Y to reach out and find families and seniors that would not have holiday groceries. So we do this at Thanksgiving and Christmas. Got to love that, folks. You got to like seeing that. All right, little basketball. Why not, right, Jules? Why not? Cop, our guy's taking on a, a group of kids from the score for more All-Stars. This was, I'm telling you right now, folks, this was a heck of a game. Double overtime. Bobby Griffin with the deuce there. Went to double overtime. BPD got the win by two. And you know what? They look good doing it. Danny Mulhern with a little kick pass here, too. Wow. Deputy Darren Greeley with two of his two. I want to know if the police were refereeing the game. That no, no the police game. refs. Greeley with two of his two, just so you know. <laughs> Your leading scorer, how about Bruce Higgins? Led the way with 26. Nice little deuce here. Uh, BPD won 76-74, but everybody's a winner in a game like, a game like this one. And um, we try to get the kids to play a good pickup game against um, the police, the Boston Police Department, um, different units. And um, we just want the kids to basically trust in the cops and know that they're not the bad guys, that it's okay to talk, hang, and relate to them any which way possible. I wanted to get kids uh, in the inner city working with cops, you know, on a different uh, different basis and on the streets just to uh, play a little game of basketball, get to know one another. Um, so they see us as, as them, as we're kids at heart, and want to play a little ball together. That's good. I mean, a lot, of the guys, uh, a lot of the guys still live in the city, and it's important to them. They're residents of the city, and they enjoy it. They're all competitive, and they're all all athletes and most of the guys have kids out there so they enjoy being around kids and it's just a positive for both uh, the kids and the police officers. And, and again for the record no police referees in that game. I have the message. Just, just so you know. All right Operation North Star. Gonna love this program. Uh, tomorrow night if you're interested folks uh, they will be stopping by the Blackstone Community Center on West Brookline Street. If you have a loved one who has autism or Alzheimer's and that loved one has a tendency to wander off Please stop by the Blackstone Community Center tomorrow. Uh, Officer Michelle Maffei will be there from 5 to 8 p.m. And uh, this program is a real, it's, it's a good one. So the interest has been unbelievable. Uh, the community, you know, either walking around, going to community meetings, or just interacting on the street, people are, you know, it's long overdue. You know, we had a great response from the parents, and we were out here today, we were getting all the appropriate information that we would need if they wandered off. Um, we have, you know, we got digital photos as well, and uh, we had a good overall turnout for day one. Of all right, thank you, Michelle. All right, to, to, to tonight's topic, and anybody who owns a TV, or if you don't own a TV, whatever, you read a newspaper, is well, uh, is quite familiar with the, the, uh, the going-ons, if you will, at Penn State University. Uh, Joe Paterno fired about three weeks ago for the cover-up of what went on with his assistant coach you, you saw there. Uh, one Jerry Sandusky. Tonight, folks, we're talking about sexual abuse. Um, it's a serious issue. It's a real issue. And I got two great guests in studio, in studio to discuss it. So without any further ado, let me welcome in Lieutenant Detective George Giuliano. Always a pleasure. Uh, my pleasure, sir. And Leora Joseph nice from the DA's office and the Child Protection Unit. Okay. The obvious question. And so much went wrong. With, with what happened at Penn State. Um, and I, I don't even know where to begin, but the outrage out there was unbelievable, and that's probably a good thing. People are outraged by what happened. But when you look at the Penn State issue, Leora, is there one thing that really stands out among the things that you saw there? I, I think if I could say that there are two things. Yeah. And the first that's always upsetting is that kids have been hurt and abused. And the second piece that I think is, is what's causing the outrage is the cover-up, yeah. and that's upsetting. Georgie, same question to it's, you. It's very hard to reconcile um, that institutions that are supposed to be held to right. a standard, or anybody in a moral uh, compass would, would even allow this to go on uh, for the sake of selling maybe an organization or a, uh, a clergy or anything. It's just it's, yeah. uh, it's morally reprehensible. It, just, it seems like with all that went on with the Catholic Church, the importance of people speaking, I guess, truth to power, what have you, believing our young ones, believing our kids. Are you surprised that something like this could happen? I'm not, unfortunately. You're not surprised. I, I, wow. I think given um, for people in the field, we see cover-ups all the time. Mm. This is large scale. It's in an institution. 
but in families people cover things up all the time also. Okay. And so that same dynamic that we see present in child sexual abuses in many, many cases is what is being very highly media attention now okay. in Penn State, but it is a phenomenon, I think, in many child sexual abuse cases. Is there something, is there, is there the media attention, which you talk about, what good can come from the media attention? George? I think the best part of it is that a topic that nobody wants to talk about, it's, right. it's, a, it's America's dirty little secret, yeah. is that you know these things are now put out to the forefront where if somebody was worried about coming forward, mm. there may be an impetus to, to see that others have done it and they may be comfortable enough to maybe fight their way through the fear of being uh, um, not believed or uh, having to go through a rigorous prosecution, which it is, but there's, there's systems and hopes out there that um, we want to always offer that, that plank of a, of a sanctuary to yeah. help them through the process. It's not always about the prosecution. I'm the police investigator. Yep. Uh, Leora actually brings the case to the trial, but there's other things that we can address and help there's people. There's hope out there. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Did, did this guy, Paterno, deserve to be fired? I mean, it's funny because initially he, he said, oh, I'm going to step down at the end of the season. And I was like, beside myself, I'm like, are you kidding me? I mean, I don't know what you did or didn't do, but you should have done something. To me, it was, it was a no-brainer. No, you, you don't decide, I'm going to stay on until the end of the year. Someone has to say goodbye to you. They did fire him, but were you surprised? Or do you think he, did, he should have been fired? I don't see how, given what is out there now in the public and what's out there, and, and I'm only going on what I've read, um, how he could not be fired. Mm. For Penn State to take themselves seriously as an educational institution, an institution of higher moral values, how they can stand by and not call to action people who have allowed abuse to take place on its facilities, I, I don't understand how that could be allowed. What's the message that gets sent with him being well, it told, speaks, see you it later? Well, it speaks to the hubris of, uh, of the organization which he was the face of. Right. That we all want to be uh, affection see him as an affectionate uh, elder statesman. Yeah, which he is, and, and, 84 years yeah, old, and, Joe Pa, yeah, you know, old school. All nothing that stuff. bad about him at all. Right. Now, I always talked about educating his, uh, his his football players. Education came first. All that's endearing. Yeah. But will he will always be remembered as the guy that didn't step up and do the right thing? A thousand good deeds can be undone by one right. bad one. And, and it's, it's like, hey, love him or love him, or love him I guess. There's no excuse making for what this guy right. should have done. And he spoke to, he actually symbolized the institution's um, hubris to, to actually take action when they were worried about the image versus the reality that the kids are being assaulted in now, their, being in as their close, premise. Right, but Crazy. being as, as close to this, this, area, this subject matter as you are, when you heard people saying, oh, come on, hey, it's not, gee, Joe did what he should have done. Joe told his superior, Joe did enough. What was your feeling when you heard that? You're like, come on, would you? That's the piece I don't understand. Yeah. How people could ever think that football, for some reason, is more important than child safety. How that an image of a university is more important than a higher moral calling. And anyone who says he did all he could, it, that, that's what bothers me yeah. in, in this scenario. It angered me too. I mean, George, what were you thinking when uh, people are actually like trying to say, leave, I, leave the old man alone, he's, you know. I mean, nothing moved in that town without Joe's nod. And you can't take the high ground then and say, I wash my hands of it. Yeah. When you absolutely, you know, up to, down to the linen being ordered in the, in the locker room. You called every single shot absolutely. and the most important one that needed to be called. Right. You, you're trying to take a pass. No, 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 my friend. And didn't know when to get off the field, pardon the pun, and, and do the right thing. And, didn't. And, and, and let the administrators uh, save the, uh, the image over... The, the rape and sexual abuse of a child. It's, it's really, morally, it, it, there's no, there's no, uh, yeah, there's it's, no, it's, no way it's, to defend it. It's not him. even close. There's no defense of him. How did this coach get away with what he did, this Jerry, Jerry Sandusky? I mean, how did he get, along, get away with it as long as he did? I mean, obviously, we know part of it because people didn't say anything, but what, you know, what the heck? What, uh, what I see and what we've learned time and time again is that p these predators are masters at uh, creating a culture of silence with their victim, mm. creating a culture of shame with the child, creating a situation where the child is wise enough or thinks they're wise enough to know that if they do tell, bad things will happen to them. They might be afraid of getting physically hurt. They might be afraid that they won't be able to hang out at the Penn State locker room anymore and that's not fun or cool. Right. So th these predators really have an ability to bring the child into their sick world yeah. and, and keep them quiet. It, it, that, that aspect of it is especially just appalling. That yeah. to, to, to do what's done to the rape and abuse of a child and then to get these kids 
to not talk about it for fear of their own safety or the safety of a loved one or a parent or what have you. Right. But and I mean, are you... They seek out kids that are maybe in peril in their own uh, life. Which he did. It's not always. With that he, he was, second mile program right. with That's kids right. who were, you know, right. broken vulnerable. families and such who were extremely vulnerable. And they're already looking for adults to maybe, uh, you know, they don't have a strong adult uh, influence. And right. like we were saying before the show started, they just don't walk into a room and decide to assault a kid. Right. It's a long, it's, it's a long, you hear about those things when somebody just grabs a kid on a bus or whatever. It, it's it's usually that long uh, drawn out process of like we imagine the first time going into the, the locker room it was like a very exciting and then oh. these it's the grooming of this you know yep. and then the allure of trying to make that um, uh, an avenue for this person to do to so it, them. but once Terrible. he gets these poor kids is it okay if you do this then you get that I know there was one case where he told the kid hey if you, you do what I ask you to do you're gonna play for Penn State one day. I'm gonna nice. get you on that team, but make sure you do what I tell you to do and make sure everything stays between us. I mean, it's, it's heartbreaking. How does a kid make that choice? How, right. how could a child ever um, understand the, the evil that's being put in front of them yeah. when they're being told, no, you could get a scholarship to college. Meanwhile, oh. their parents at home are talking about how much college costs or whatever, they're feeling the pressure at home to succeed. To get, and here's a coach promising them the yeah. golden ticket. How do you turn that down? How many people do you think knew? I mean, so many had to know. This is going back 10, 15 yeah, years. I mean, but how many, how many people do you think? And, and, and I don't know what, you know, what, what their punishment is going right. to be dealing with that guilty conscience, but how many people do you uh, made a choice to, your, to say? Yeah, apply it to your own life, whether it's at your own work or within your own family or within any organization you're in. You know, bad news travels fast. Mm. And I'm sure people knew, and much like the janitor who was, you know, in that precarious position of his livelihood dependent on showing up to, yeah, to the work. Yeah, right. And he, yeah. Who was he told, dude, do you really want to say anything? Because, uh, you know, yeah, these this, are this is going to be your job. Right. And, and the whole the whole community <laughs> is, is, everybody's employed in some way or another in, a, in, in Penn State, let's say. It's, it's, it's a great example of how all uh, systems fail when, you, when you're talking about it. Awful. And, and a lot of times people don't want to get involved. I don't yeah. want to get involved. You How know, big a role is that play? I think that's a huge role. I don't really know. I don't exactly know. You know, if they don't have a videotape of the incident, they don't know. So the problem with that is that people don't listen to children. And sometimes they'll, a kid will say something and they'll say, well, I still don't know because I don't have proof. Well, the, 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 we want to throw them a lifeline. We want to talk about maybe things that, that like, we're hoping this is the end of an era, whether it's the you know, clergy. Well, I would think, I mean, it, but, it, I thought the Roman church blew the, the roof off. And, any, you know, again, yeah, getting back and, to listen, when your kid this, says something, yes. you got to listen to them. And I want to touch on that in a second. Yeah. But, I mean, it, it's when you see something, you say something. There aren't many times in your life where, you, where you're called on to be courageous. And it just seems like so many people drop the ball because it was, hey, this is a put up or shut up moment in your life where right. you got to stand up and protect these young kids. Right. Boys, people want to and marginalize they it. They want to make right. it horse play. They want to believe they're not seeing what they see. Uh, that's which the is thing. There's denial. There is that that willful yeah. blindness. Oh, it's just kidding around in the shower. Yeah. People want to believe that. Yeah. Because the, yeah. the truth is so ugly. Right. When we talk about how ugly the truth is and how manipulative this guy was, he was on. He went on with Bob Costas, and he was asked to explain <laughs> the issue in the shower where <laughs> you have an eyewitness saying he saw him sexually rape a young boy, and he said, "Well, the boy turned the showers on. We were snapping towels." Like, listening to the guy would make your skin crawl. Right. And I guess it speaks to just how manipulative these people can be. How can someone in his right mind rationalize the sexual abuse Th that's that he your point. on a young The girl? right mind, like, he even has to convince himself that what he's, he's done is separated into a box in his brain that he can live with. Yeah. So denial, uh, we always say in our business, if you can, if you can go into an interview and make a, a pedophile confess to a crime, you've hit a home run, because it doesn't right. happen that often. They're, there's a there's a wire cross that just doesn't allow them to even go into that. They wouldn't be able to. It's such to a do what they do. Well, yeah. but I think they also justify so much to themselves. You know, in Sandusky's case, he might be saying, "Well, maybe this is wrong, but look what I'm doing. I created this foundation. I'm giving yeah. these kids these wonderful opportunities. So they are. They they're, owe me. They're, yeah. they, you know, they owe me. Yeah. There's this justification. It's, sick. it's twisted. Yeah. We talked about the, about the victims and how tough. Well, I just want to that question by itself. How tough is it? for a victim to come forward and what kind of things, just internally, the shame, the guilt, and all that stuff, but how tough is it for a victim to come forward and say, hey, listen, this happened to me? I think that is the biggest act of courage, and that's also not what's being talked about. 
these kids who have actually come yeah. forward and who talked about really private things about their bodies and what others may perceive the kids allowed, and I'm really putting that in quotes to happen because the law obviously doesn't believe that children can allow these things to happen. Right. And I think those are the really courageous people, are those kids. Now, what we've learned is that there are systems that can help children. And here in Boston, we're really lucky to have the Suffolk County Children's Advocacy Center, and George and I work with them all the time, um, where we have one center for kids who've been abused, and they can come in and they can tell their story once and gathered for them already there is a, a police detective, a DA, an advocate, a mental health therapist, a social worker from the department, um, a nurse, and we all gather to hear that story and to begin the process of healing. And this is the Family Justice Center. Correct. Which is ComAv. 989 ComAv. EU. They are in Brighton. Before yeah. we get to that point, though, when a kid, and, and kids don't often say it. That's correct. And we'll, we'll touch on that in a second, but when a kid says, hey, mom, dad, whatever, um, something's going on with the neighbor next door, or Coach Sandusky, or whatever. How should a parent handle that? I think the first and most important message we as parents need to give our children is that we're listening. We hear them. We want to hear them, and we want to be there for them. We're not going to get mad about what they're telling us. Parents also, and this is a hard piece, can't it's a devastating thing to hear that your right. business happened. But if the child sees you have some type of breakdown and get all upset, that could inhibit the child from talking mm -hmm. and shut the child down. So parents have to ch somehow find that inner strength to be there for their kid when they hear that disclosure. And by the way, it's not just parents, because sometimes kids will tell a coach right. or a teacher or someone they're close with. And all of us have to have that ability to listen and react appropriately, not overreact, right. and refer it to the right resources. This is not a situation yep. where if you hear something like that, you can go out and become a detective all in one and create an, a new episode of Law and Order all yeah, by you yourself. Have to support you you don't hear it and hold on to it clearly. Right. Yeah. But yeah. you said something on the hallway about kids being able to talk to their parents. What, what's the thing you said, you said you said to your kids about, you can talk to me about anything and I will you never. Can, I will never get mad at you. Yep. Anything you tell me. I will never get mad. And you know, we have we've heard this message a lot when it comes to drinking. We yeah. you know parents tell kids yeah, a lot of times if up. you're at a party, we'll call yep. any time of yep. day, we'll come there. We have to give the same message about our our kids and their bodies. Yep. When things happen that you're uncomfortable with, if you're scared or if you're confused, call. We will not get upset with you. When you hear that, and let's I want to I want you to hit on that family justice sure. center again. So a parent hears it, the first thing they want to do, like you said, is probably go and find the guy and and, yeah. and, and do his own little justice thing. But what do they do? They're, they're angry, they're feeling guilty. It's How the hell did I allow this to happen to my child? What did I miss? And often they're torn because the perpetrator is most likely going to be someone in the parent's own circle. It could be the parent, you know, a mother's boyfriend. It could be a grandfather. It could be a beloved uh, relative who's doing these things. And so the parent themselves is stuck in the middle, what they perceive in the moment between yeah. their child and someone that they also have a relationship right. to. It's overwhelming. Do we want Uncle Johnny to go to jail? You know, which if now he did it, yeah. yeah. Well, but I, mean, I guess we're going to say if, if Uncle Johnny did yeah, these we, things, we agree, he's going it, to jail. But in the family dynamics, no, I know, but it's yeah. funny. But people, I guess that maybe that's some people, of the good that comes out of this stuff. Yeah. The people don't yeah. say, "Geez, I don't." Uncle Johnny's a nice guy. Well, no kidding, he's a nice guy right. because that gets back to the profile of what these people mm -hmm. do. Correct. But if he did these things, you're damn right, you're going to jail. Yeah. We Uncle agree, Johnny. but I think you'll. And I know, but I mean, is you'll find parents, breadwinners. It's just amazing. But that's the Joe Paterno situation, right? People said he knew about it. I don't think he should be fired. Nice guy. Yeah, One of the nicest it. guys yeah. you're going to meet, the guy next door. Yeah. I mean, disbelieving parents. Not only, I mean, I can understand oh, the disbelief, but what, do you, what about the poor kid, and maybe just pick up on them a little bit more, who says, hey, this happened. They're like, come on, come on, Mr. Yeah. You know, active imagination. Sure. What do we say to that kid who goes to mom or dad or that person in their life who's supposed to be there for them? What's their. What's their avenue of action? Well, that is a, uh, that typically when a parent does not believe a child, that really shuts the child down. Yeah. And unfortunately, what that means is the child continues to be at risk. Not only because they're more likely to be continue to be abused because nothing's happening, right. but also now the child's facing all these feelings and confusion. I tried to tell my mother. I tried to get protection. Yeah. No one can help me. No one can protect uh, me. Is that that's going to be the worst feeling? They do the end up telling a guidance counselor Eventually, sometimes. Yeah. I mean, it does. It does sometimes come out, or they tell a friend who tells a guidance counselor. But it's still, if there's no support from a, uh, the parents or, or, or adults in their lives, think about how devastating that is, that all of a sudden there's strife in the family yeah. uh, mm -hmm. and there's fights going on and there's 
They, they, either they believe, they believe it enough that they're going to question someone on it, and then they become the focus of all the turmoil in the home, and they need the most love and support. Oh. It's a very tough dynamic. It's terrible. Yeah, we have a, there's a toll-free number people can oh, call, okay. and that's the hotline. And Dave, feel free to throw, up, throw it up at the bottom of the screen if you get a second. That's the... 1-800-792-5200, child at risk hotline. Who... Who should jot that number down? Keep it up on the screen, Dave, if you can. That Who's is that the number for? hotline for the Department of Children's and Families. And anyone who suspects abuse, sexual, physical neglect should call that to make a report. Okay. How tough is that phone call? Like, what's well, it's it's, it's and what happens when the call is made? Is there, who's on the other? Who's on the, the receiving end of that call? Yeah. Okay. Twenty-four hours, seven days a week. There's always someone who'll answer that and triage. The situation. Sometimes it's an twenty-four emergency. hours, seven days a week. Correct. Yeah. It's, and, and sometimes it's a it's an immediate response from uh, agencies. Or let's say the abuse happened six years ago mm -hmm. when they were at camp, or they were uh, staying over at uh, somebody's home. Uh, you know, and you want to report. If you want to report to the police, you have to report it to the police in your jurisdiction. Yeah. So if you're uh, in Cambridge, you call the Cambridge police, or if you're in Boston proper, you would call the Boston police, and you go to the, well the nine one one to the local yeah. station. Um, that's how you trigger the police response. But the social service end of it, people are mandated reporters, yep. nurses, teachers, clergy, yep. cops, firemen, almost anybody who has a, a responsibility to care and, and, and keep children, or if they have that information come to them, they're duty bound by law to actually report have to that. Report it. Yeah. And, and by the way, the Department of Children's and Families will then notify local law enforcement. Yeah. So people don't have to worry about what department to... Making additional phone exactly. calls. Exactly, one call. Yep. And that sets off the chain of, of, of action. Why, why does it take kids so long? Some people hold on to it. Does that get back to the, the guilt? The I think that gets right to the heart of the child's uh, relationship with the predator, mm -hmm. that they've been inculcated into a code of silence, that they're ashamed sometimes about their bodies, and it's hard to talk about these things with anybody, yeah. um, and there's guilt. And there's worry. What's going to happen when I tell? Right. Is, is this person going to go to jail? Is my mother going to be sad? What, what's going to happen mm. to me? Is social services going to take me away from my family? Right. I mean, those are really legitimate, normal concerns that kids have. And I think that that really inhibits disclosure. Yeah. What do and you they, say to? Well, they, they may be conflicted as to they have an affinity for the person. Correct. In a, in a, uh, and it's through that's part of the power of that manipulator yeah. that they may derive some physical pleasure or pleasure from the from the uh, the touching but it's conflicting for them right. it's, it's not normal but it's their love, bodies it's are telling not them, love, it's yeah, affection, their bodies but telling it's them something different proper. Yeah. and that's yeah. and or they, they the predator is threatening them that if you go mm -hmm. and tell I'm going to kill your yeah. mother or father or I'll, I'll, you, you, the bad things are going to happen to you very powerful think about how scary that is uh, you're taking some I can't it, young kill, mind. it kills me it's, it's, it's the really the whole thing and uh, some people recover uh, and are liberated by telling and, and going well, through the That's what I want to ask you. Yeah. What's in it for the victim who finally says, you know what, enough is enough, I'm going to come forward? Because you do hear these stories of the unburdening yes. and the pressure and I the relief. kids end up feeling so relieved um, when they are ultimately able. And, they, and we've had kids at the Family Justice Center. We have a special way we speak to them mm -hmm. in a one-way mirror with a specialist. And they'll say sometimes, thank you for listening. Yeah. They feel like they were finally able to take this horrible secret and get it out of their lives. And they are happy that people believe them. And that's always a big thing with kids. Are grown-ups going to believe me? Mm. Yeah, some kids are destroyed uh, by the just that whole that innocence being taken. Yeah. And you can see, you know, even adults that we know have been abused as kids that may be our abusers now. Yeah. Uh, we, we do see that. Or we see people that are just out the street and they may be victims of yeah, abuse funny. when people they were kids. Story, you don't realize, like, yeah. it kills me when people see somebody who's down on their life, like, oh, look yeah. at that lazy You don't bum. know what it's they've like, been through. You don't know the story. That's right. Right. Time for two quick questions. Are there telltale signs of sexual assault? Are there things you can see in a child or a teen that say, wait a second, maybe something's not right? You know, behavioral, anything like that that a parent should maybe say, hey, listen, I noticed so and so, let's talk. I think it's Anything always there? good to have open communication with your children and especially with teens. I think that any kinds of signs of, you know, I'm not a clinician. And, okay. and, and I think that if your parents are concerned, they should talk to their kids about what they're concerned about and they should seek professional help. Therapy is a great thing. Yep. You know. Yeah, but it, it's common sense whether it's drugs or it's sexual abuse. Yeah. It's the withdrawal of a child yeah. who doesn't now doesn't want to eat. Doesn't want to do this. Doesn't want to doesn't do that. Doesn't want to hang out with his friends. Right. He's All of a sudden, they're, they're, they're trying to separate themselves from the danger, and then it be, you, it's it's the you know when you see it kind of thing. Like, yeah. and parents shouldn't be over. You know, from the usual highs and lows of moody kids, teenagers, whatever. Yeah. Don't ignore that. Or if some adult is spending an inordinate amount of time in that child's life, I think yeah. that's that it. isn't. That's, talk about that real quick. That yeah. the adult who 
has no friends, is always around, has the latest gadget, yeah. toy, Buy video games. They're spending, there's no reason for them to be spending time with your children. Right. And if you think it's odd, it's odd. Yeah. You know, and you can, if it walks like a duck, it's a duck. Okay. And I think it's important for people to be on alert and to be thoughtful. Why is this person coaching and asking to come over and wants to take my kids to the movies? That's weird. Yeah. It's in weird. The, in the case of Sandusky, shower with my kids. Oh, please. Oh, that's all, all right. right. To, and I think, I hope this is the best thing that comes out of it. But to those who now see something, what do you say to them about the importance, and this, this will be the last question, of saying something, standing up, showing some courage, and, and, and protecting those who need protection? You can save a kid. You mm -hmm. can save people's lives by getting involved and reporting, and that's what we have to do. I agree. Georgie, same question. Yeah, I agree I mean, that it, to do nothing will haunt the person who doesn't do anything about it, right. and it also doesn't do anything any good to the person who needs their love and support. And if, when in doubt, push it out and let us deal with it. I mean, like I was saying earlier, it's not always gonna be a prosecution, it's not always gonna be, uh, but there'll be some sort of services like at the Family Justice Center. Some cases are referred to a social worker because it might be two younger kids, a seven and a nine year old that, you know, they're, in, they're not, it's, it's, uh, it's not, it's, it's less of a, it, it, there's something going on in the family that yep. we, can, we can actually work on because uh, they may be watched, forced to watch pornography and they're acting out. So I'm just saying that not everything is uh, a full-blown... Uh, and it's okay to overreact? Uh, well, if you see not in front of the kid. It's not okay to overreact. <laughs> yeah. It's okay, you must react. To act, react. Okay. okay, don't overreact, just react. Okay. Because we, we don't want the kid to be the... Uh, the uh, we want to try to lower the drama. Lower the drama. You guys were great tonight. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Clearly a timely, timely issue given what's going on at Penn State and now at Syracuse University. I want to thank tonight's guests, Leroy Joseph and Lieutenant George Giuliano. Uh, some great information. Um, and I want to thank you for watching. Thanks for watching Call the Cops. Till next time, have a great week and be safe, everybody. Good night.